I am really excited about this session, Liz, yeah. because what are we talking about? We're talking about artificial intelligence. It's pretty amazing stuff. Right, and there's a ton of buzzwords around it. I think we've talked about it a lot with some of our other products like Database Performance Analyzer, and it's a big part of making um, a service desk really easy to use for users who maybe aren't familiar with it, instead of like training them all the time about a very specific, like if you have if you have a form that you fill in and you have to have a, a, a training manual on how to fill in that form, something is not right. Exactly. There's a little bit of a problem there. And you're spot on. With artificial intelligence, we're ultimately trying to guide our users in the right direction so they know where to look instead of constantly scratching their heads. So it's pretty amazing what it brings to the service desk side of the world. So is it mostly for gathering user input? Is it for recommending um, self-service? Or where does it typically appear? Honestly, all of the above. So we're trying to collect information so that you're not constantly having that back and forth of, did you try this? Is your computer even on? Um, but it's also making sure they're going to the right resources. So you told me you needed this, here's an example of exactly what you're looking for. And also it should adapt over time. Exactly. All right, so why don't we walk through just a really simple example, sure. uh, user input, yeah. right? Kind of going back to that, don't hit them up with 50 million fields. What that looks like in terms of starting with a, a basic request that's kind of broad, you're not sure mm -hmm. what it is, and then figuring out exactly what that request really is. Yeah, definitely, let's take okay. a look. So as an employee, when I come to the service portal, there's a handful of options that I could go and take a look at. But the most jarring here is gonna be that search bar. And if you think about Google, it's a perfect example. I can go and search for exactly what I'm looking for. So we tried to mirror the exact same logic here. And it's natural language instead of expecting them to speak IT. Yeah, totally. So when I come in and I am just a lowly little requester, I don't speak IT, but I use Zoom all the time for our web conference meetings. And as of late, I've been having a lot of problems with connecting my camera on my meetings, which doesn't necessarily bode well when you're trying to, you know, face to face over the web. And Meta, that's actually true in the last couple of weeks while we've been on yes. uh, web calls. <laughs> Accurate. So when I come in here and I type in like Zoom meeting for an example, but I don't even have to go so far as to type in the full phrase, it's already prompting me with suggestions. But let's say I don't find exactly what it is I'm looking for, so I'm just gonna glaze over all my suggestions and head straight into submitting a help ticket. So when I get here, it's still capturing what I originally entered, making my life a little bit easier. So my meeting camera won't work. And the search box popped up again while it you were sure typing. It sure did. Out. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that search bar actually brings to my experience, okay. but specifically taking a look at how your employees can categorize or classify the problems they're having. So down below, I'm going through and I see a bunch of categories, which admittedly is overwhelming. Where do I click? So here are smart suggestions, otherwise known as artificial intelligence. But again, as a requester, I wouldn't know that's AI because it says smart suggestions. So here I recognize that Zoom is an application that I actually use. To take it one step further, the subcategories are gonna do the exact same thing. So now I know I'm actually doing the right thing up front, making me feel like A, I should get a gold star, but B, knowing my ticket is gonna go into the right hands. So the main reason for doing this then, I guess, is that the, the big advantage of using a service desk, like really incorporating a lot of different options and workflows and automation is that automation is way, way easier to actually have narrowed it down to context and specifics before you kick it into automation to avoid it kicking back to a human who has to sign that. Exactly, incident. and there could be outliers too. So the more that you give them, even if it's a condensed version of that, the better it's gonna bode for your technicians. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna get my issue resolved so much faster. I'm gonna actually hold a question until later, but you, I'm just, cause I guess I'm gonna have to take your word for it at this point, because what I saw was a search box that popped up and I guess two, right? So well, actually, no, three. <laughs> so there was the initial search, then the context aware search as you were working on the details of the ticket, and then categorization, subcategorization. You're saying that AI was actually involved in recommending all of those, so those evolved it over sure time. It sure was, yep. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold you to that, and when we get to the end of the session, I'm gonna make you show me that so that we can see it changing or at least talk about how you would know. Definitely, yeah. okay. sounds good. So to round out this ticket for Amelia employee, the final two questions have popped up. So this is our final layer of how they're going through and classifying this issue. Now that I've put in all the information as it pertains to my Zoom problems, I'm able to submit this help ticket and now my technician is well equipped with everything they need to diagnose my problem. 
Well, and also on that last screen, what that, that last box was, did you reboot? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got a pretty good chance of not having to ask the very first question. Exactly. So now that we've looked at how artificial intelligence can influence how employees are behaving in terms of ticket submission and all the data that can be collected, not to mention categorization, big win there, with the service catalog, there's also so much value that can be driven because of how powerful it can be. You're collecting infinitely more data upfront, but pairing that with an automated process, making your technicians' lives easier, and ultimately your employees happier because they're getting the services they need in an efficient manner. But it's not just for IT. It can also be utilized by all of your internal service providers. We have clients who have utilized the service catalog in some pretty unique ways. For an example, there's one team that uses it for office check-ins. So when a guest comes through, they have their tablet situated and they have a service catalog running for that check-in. But it doesn't stop there. You could use it for human resources, for employee onboarding, or even facilities, changing light bulbs. The list is limitless. Okay, that is absolutely true, and I love that. So you're going to spend some time, you're gonna build um, uh, service items that map to the business, actually reflect the way your organization works. That's gonna be provide a lot of automation, and save a lot of time, and get quicker time to users being happy. It's gonna raise your CSAT. But the trick is, if the forms are simple, if the entry point is simple, mm -hmm. how do you get them to the right form? That feels like something where artificial intelligence can really be a help. Exactly, especially knowing if you have so many internal service providers who are leveraging it, that's a lot of catalog items to have to dig through, and I ain't got time for that. And that's exactly where the artificial intelligence is going to come into play. So let's take a look at how it's going to help nudge me there. Cool. As an employee, when I come back to the portal, again, I see that search bar. So I could start here. So I recently got married and I had to go through a slew of paperwork to change my name. It was a headache, but for the greater good. You would think that at this point, that would be a lot easier than it uh, is, right? You would think they would automate it. Um, maybe we have an idea there. Um, so going back to changing my name, if I were to go through and put in change name, I'm now being prompted with the available service, but also a knowledge base article. In this example, though, I know for a fact that I do need to follow certain procedures in order to get my name changed. Once I reach this screen, I'll find every required field that I need to enter in order for my human resources team to best facilitate my name change. Because that's defined in that form. Exactly. And once the employee goes through and fills out all the required contents here, then human resources can take care of it in a pretty quick fashion, making me happy and with my new name. Okay, so go back a second to that search for the name change yeah. uh, form. There's another one here, which is actually about updating the beneficiary forms for life insurance. Mm -hmm. Is that coming up here because somebody took the time to say, well, these things are kind of related, or is artificial intelligence helping guide that because other people tend to use those, use those flows together? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's actually populating as a result of how we've used the system. So rather than programming the artificial intelligence, because that's not the nature behind it, it's truly showing this based on adoption. So because in the past people have looked for changing their name, there might have been a technician that actually suggested, here's a great article for you to rely on to make that appropriate change. Okay, and so by we, you don't mean we, um, the service desk, you mean we, the organization that's operating it. So exactly. these are going to adapt uh, over time to the specific operation of that organization. You hit the nail on the head. It really is machine learning. So it's like muscle memory. It's learning the different actions you're taking over time to start making the appropriate changes based on what your employees are putting into the system. Okay, that is a great example for HR. And I think a lot of our customers actually start with HR as sort of that first adjacent department that they really start adding service catalog mm -hmm. items for. So show us another example, maybe for a different department. Yeah, definitely. Let's bring it back to IT. So when I come here, there's oftentimes the same request for password reset. I am the number one culprit for this. My IT team can attest to that. So I type in password. From here, I'm prompted with my available password reset services. I know exactly where I need to go. So we'll click on the first one here. And what's great about this form once I get there is it only asks me one question. What's the application that you're having a problem with? For this example, we'll check Zoom. And from there, I'll go ahead and request my password reset for this application. 
Once I've made that request, I'm ushered into my request and I can see that this one is pending work, it's brand new. But what's really cool with this process is we've taken it one step further to automate what the employee can do. So we're really bringing that employee empowerment into focus by using tasks and approvals. The workflow actually puts the work back in my hands. So now I need to go through and read the how-to document on resetting my password. I'm not waiting for a technician to take care of this. I'm able to do it on my own, which makes me feel really good. Well, I love the way it sort of flips that helpfulness from, uh, instead you get an email where somebody cuts and pastes a link in and it feels almost like you're being punished by the IT department. It's like, you should have known and right. scolded. And instead it just presents it for you much faster because in the end it's you fixing it yourself. You're exactly. always gonna be happier. Okay, Liz, we've talked about using artificial intelligence to make sure that you have what you need when you fill out a form in the first place. You showed us how it is helping guide employees to the right forms in the first place. But how can you really do the magic, which is prevent a ticket in the first place? Like get them the information they need and guide them to resources without and, and prevent workflows, potentially redirecting a ticket or anything else. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up, Patrick. So that's really where we're driving with the artificial intelligence towards case deflection. Why put in a ticket when there's a resource that you could actually digest to do the troubleshooting on your own? And again, your technicians will thank you. So with that, there's different ways that you could help work on the content so that it really is employee focused so they could follow a step by step, but again, be nudged by artificial intelligence. So let's take a look at that here. For an example, we use Dialpad to make many of our outbound calls. So let's say that I'm having problems in terms of my contacts within Gmail connecting with this, which is critical for me to make these outbound calls. Rather than getting it set up like it's being suggested as a service, I actually could go and reflect on this article about how I can get my contacts to synchronize with Dialpad so that I can keep doing my job. Here, as an employee, I can go through and read the contents look at the gifts, get all the help that I need so that I can make sure that the connection is established and go on with my day. So it's pretty easy to create these. I mean, the thing that I love here is you've got an animated GIF. So instead of having that thing where you have 16 different screenshots and hoping that they can follow along, you're actually showing them what it looks like if it's yeah. successful. And I think that's what so many of our clients have turned to rather than relying on photos step by step. We're using the rich text that you're, you can bring into these novels knowledge base articles and putting giffies in. Nothing is easier than following along with a 10 second clip and I can look at it on one monitor and reproduce the exact same steps on my other screen. And again, I'm able to resolve the issue myself without ever having to put in a ticket. So you're using a lot of CSAT to figure out whether people really like processes mm -hmm. or not to tune them. Do you find that they like uh, workflows that are part of a service catalog item more, or do they tend to like being able to do it themselves? Like almost they've, it's a discovery place where they get smarter. That's a tough one to answer because I think that all teams benefit from both. And using customer satisfaction, we can definitely get down to which is panning out better for our teams. We have something so simple as a thumbs up, thumb down. So I can actually have better insight to the articles that users are reading on their own. But on the back end, I can actually qualify the number of times a knowledge base article has been attached to a ticket, helping me better understand is our content actually being used? Exactly. And that's that thing. You only have a limited amount of time uh, in IT. So you're either building automation, building workflows, or you're building, uh, in this case, KB articles. Mm -hmm. so, you're, so basically what's happening here, you're saying, is that the artificial intelligence is guiding people to resources they need. Then you're watching the use of those resources over time, and that helps you decide where to invest. Exactly. Like maybe they like KBs more, I'm going to spend my time uh, proactively building uh, help uh, files that will help them, or maybe it's more complicated and you want to actually create a workflow. Mm -hmm. I think for me, the big takeaway here is that this is not Skynet, right? This is observing behavior and getting better over time. Yeah, exactly. And originally when artificial intelligence came out, it was kind of scary. No, it's not Big Brother, but we are helping take the different actions that your team is using within the service desk to empower the employee, which is what we all want at the end of the day, make our lives a little easier so we can work smarter, not harder. We covered a lot, and this session has been a great crash course. How do we end this? Good question. Let's go to the source. Say thanks and smile. Thanks, thanks and, and smile. smile.